Hi, my name is Diane, Diane Bertrand, and I'm the first time author of a book entitled The Gospel According to Diane Between Vestibule and Altar. I have done several little snippets, teasers, um, one on the general content of the book, another on the, my family um, and the priests who walk through my life. And this one, I'm just going to touch a little bit on the villagers. Because when I, we moved, at, when I was age two, we moved into Indian Walk, which is a village three miles south of Princess Town and 17 miles north of Maruga on the Indian Walk Maruga Road. Um, at the time, my father was um, posted as the headmaster of the Indian War Government School, and we lived in the government headquarters next door. Um, it was a small village in the south of the island of Trinidad. However, at that time, in the 60s, because Trinidad and Tobago was just finding its footing as an independent nation, um, transportation wasn't great, the road infrastructure wasn't great, and so the village was quite remote um, in, in the sense that it wasn't easy to get to see San Fernando or Port of Spain, the more um, populous um, areas of the island. However, what was beautiful about the village is that it was made up of a lot of beautiful, interesting, flamboyant personalities. And um, we interfaced with them so beautifully. The, the government school was like the center, the focal point of the village. And my father, as the headmaster, incorporated the entire village into the school's activities, sports days, speech days, um, and all of the music festival and arts festival competitions put on by the Ministry of Education at that time. Um, so we were very embedded in the village, but from more the children of the headmaster's point of view, rather than living in the, the village um, and deeply integrated in the village, but still very intimately connected. And then there was this subset of the village, the Catholic um, Catholics who came to our house to worship, and we were even more intimately connected with them because you know the celebration of Mass and the sharing of the body and blood of Christ in the Eucharist brings on this mysterious, um, you know, harmony and integration of a community because, of course, Jesus is the glue that holds us all together, and His body and blood is what energized our mystical body in that part of the vineyard. So it was just beautiful living there and growing up in that village and having the expose of all of the cultures and the, the village practices that really um, formed part of the fabric of our lives. Um, I um, understood when I became an adult that a lot of the appreciation of the psychology of the, the characters of the village informed my dealing and living among the, the people that I met as an adult. It was an excellent study on interconnectedness and the beauty of community life in an uncomplicated time when, when we were being raised without the complexities of technology, mass media, and all of the distractions of today. And so what it really made us do was not look down at our phones or our iPads or even stare forward um, catatonically at um, at our our televisions, but it allowed us to look look across at the people around us and to engage them. The people in the shop, the people at the standby, the people at school, just engage the village life and participate richly and profoundly in the village life. And that the book hopefully shows that the book will be out in August in both um, paperback and Kindle versions on Amazon and. Um, I hope that when COVID opens up, I will start a journey of going and book clubs and signings and launches and maybe, you know, just to meet people who have read the book and share. As I always said, our family was the domestic church on steroids. And so it might be good to just hear other people's experiences of their domestic church growing up in the Catholic life. See you soon. God bless. Thanks for listening. Bye.